Hi, this is Jose V. Mark Show, and today I am talking to Tom Conwell, who is a UFO, UFO, UFO expert, blogger. Um, I think he's also into the paranormal, but I'll double check with him, at, that, with him in a moment. And he's a great believer that there is something out there. Hi, Tom. Hello there, Mark. Um, yeah, I've been... Uh... Um, I've been uh, dabbling in the paranormal now since I retired from my company. I was an electronic technician for about um, 37 years and also in the military doing the same type of work. So, yeah, I, um, I jumped into the paranormal just because it was something to do. Uh, and I've always been, like, sort of generally interested in it. So, um uh, I also had an opportunity from there to um, to get into ufology, and I've always had a love for UFOs and and um, extraterrestrial life and and things along those lines. So um, so I uh, um, um, so I've I've been doing that ever since, and that's a I'm going on about ten years since I've been retired now. So uh, it's uh, uh, fun. Um, I haven't been able to do too much paranormal investigating lately, but um, I, I'm, I'm like full time in the, in the UFO stuff uh, as an author and a writer and and uh, a lecturer and all kinds of stuff like that. Yes, you've got very interesting books I saw on your site, your website. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I have uh, four books. Um, the website address, by the way, is www.theyarehere-conwell, C-O-N-W-E-L-L, dot com. And um, um, I have four books, plus I have... Um, um, I have um, uh, a UFO sighting map of the United States, and I put that together. It took me about a year to do, and um, um, it shows where the hot spots are around the country. And um, not only has it is it just show like like uh, the, the the cities and uh, the fact that there's a lot of sightings around each city. It also shows where there's tremendous amounts of sightings out in the middle of nowhere. And those are the ones I find the most interesting that, um, that I end up writing the most about. Um, it, it, it's really a lot of fun, Mark. I imagine it took a lot of research as well. Uh, lots of research. Um, I, I work with the National UFO Reporting Center. Um, they have... Well, it's a, it's a repository of uh, tens of thousands of UFO sightings in um, uh, various countries. I think mostly in the U.S., but um, they also have the countries like around the U.S. And um, um, what I needed to do was go through each particular state, picking out... Um, the really important sightings, uh, putting them on a map, and um, taking a look at the concentrations of other sightings, and if they indicate something that was that's unusual, like you know a, a concentration in the country or uh, uh, something you wouldn't expect to see. So, um, and I also sell that map on uh, my webpage. Do, do you? Um, do, have you done anything about people that have been abducted? Um, I was, <clears throat> my first three years in, um, in uh, the UFO field, I did nothing but um, UFO abduction interviews. And um, I came across some really interesting things um a lot of which i won't talk about because they're highly personal to the people that that um that, that told me about them but uh some of the things i can discuss uh are um someone 
waking up and seeing uh, four different types of beings in the room. Um, so that, that was interesting. Uh, there was uh, short uh, gray beings, tall gray beings, a guy that looked like a human, but there was something off about him, and this large seven-foot-tall bug-looking thing that reminded the person of a praying mantis. Um, can you imagine seeing that in your room? I think they'd freak out a little bit. A little tiny praying oh, yeah. mantis would scare yeah. the hell out of me. And then there's this big thing. Oh, and that, that, was, that was quite a story I heard that time. Um, but unfortunately, they did a lot of things to this person. And I, I just can't talk about them. Okay. Um, and most of the reports that uh, uh, people told me about were um, highly personal. And I, I really can't get into it, unfortunately. However, to make a long story short about um, the uh, abductions is I had, um, uh, like I said, about three full years of nothing but abduction interviews. And then I saw my first UFO. Uh, I was hmm, maybe 65 at the time. And when I saw my first UFO, I was hooked. I could care less about the abduction interviews. I wanted to know where these things are hiding out, where they come from, why they're here, and a whole lot of other things. And that's when I started my research and uh, writing. So it, it, it was, I, I came full circle with that. It's amazing, isn't it, how um, the, the NASA has recently... Um had to reveal certain information about UFOs. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, 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 the, the, uh, the U.S. military, I think it was, are the ones that um, uh, they uh, released the, um, the um, uh, gun videos of some craft that they were following. And um, these things were really unique, outran the jets by a factor of 10 to 1 when they wanted to. Um, they would uh, uh, fly through the air straight, but also be rotating at the same time. And that got the attention of the pilots who were following it. Um, yeah, th th these things are really, really interesting. And... Um, that is as close as any government has come to uh, saying that um, that there's another uh, civilization who's on our doorstep. But they're there, all right, Mike. They're right there. I believe. I, I reckon there's a lot of cover-ups because you. I. I know. I've heard of Project Blue Book, obviously, and obviously the Canadian disclosure files I read, read about recently. And UK ones, there's the uh, UK Roswell as well. Yeah, there's um, there, this tremendous cover up. And I think that all of the countries got together and decided that it's probably not a good idea to say that there's another civilization who can fly rings around our aircraft, who can go with impunity and go wherever they want, whenever they want. We can't shoot them down or anything like it. And uh, it wouldn't be a good thing to, uh, to tell the general population that these guys uh, make our things look like uh, little toys. It, it's got to be um, some very large... Uh, um, a uh, very large get together and making up their mind that they cannot tell, they cannot disclose what's actually going on. And I believe that most most uh, go uh, governments have had some sort of contact with um, with whatever or how many extraterrestrial races uh, are around our planet. And I would figure that at this point, there's at least ten. And uh, it, 
it's quite an interesting deal because they're worried about saying too much, but people are catching on, so they can't say too little either. They're, they're, they're getting squeezed from both ends, and it's just a matter of time before they have to come up and say, uh, well, we've sort of been holding this back for a while, guys. They really are here, but, uh, you know, we, we've, we've been talking with them, but there's no worry. Um, they, they come in peace and uh, then go from there. Um, I, I don't think I would want to be in the government on that day. Do, do you think that they try to... Um, obviously, you've seen the, the Hollywood films about aliens and all that. And do you think that they slowly try to get it into our psyche through that medium? Oh, absolutely. What, what they did... Um, the way I see it is they were able to influence the movie making industry so that when there was um, uh, TV shows, especially in, in the sci-fi realm, that a lot of the technology that they showed on this um, was real, was really in use at the time. And um, I believe that uh, um, they have been influencing our uh, television and uh, movie making since the early 80s when we first started coming out with, um, well, uh, you know, Star Trek and the Star Wars series and things like that. Do, do you think that lots of people like to admit that they believe in UFOs, but not publicly? Uh, yes and no. Um, I think that most people, when questioned, uh, uh, believe that there is life in the universe somewhere. Um, and they say, well, well are, are they really here or not? Well, maybe, maybe not. You know, it's a long distance. They, they, they try to make all these varying excuses uh, why they couldn't be here. But I think in their heart of hearts, they know that uh, we're being visited uh, regularly and um, they're keeping a real close eye on us. Where do you think they're roughly coming from? I mean, as a guess, what was it? Oh, okay. Um, I think that uh, uh, there's probably about 50 star systems um, in the general area of us, uh, meaning on our half of the of the uh, Milky Way, um, that are have full blown civilizations on them, and the, these civilizations are spacefaring. And um, these groups of people go around to visit planets. Um, they make contact with with other civilizations. Um, th these are from um, uh, uh, star systems, some of which we're familiar with. Um, and I don't know to tell you. I don't know for certain where they're from. Um, I've heard a few things, uh, but I, I don't have direct knowledge of where they happen to be from, so I'd rather not even say. But I know that they're from star systems that are within uh, probably a hundred light years of us, um, a light year being seven and a half trillion miles. So um, they, they found a way to, to traverse that distance um, and uh, have it not take a hundred years, but uh, only minutes. And um, that's why they're so far advanced to us. And uh, we have to sit up and notice when, when they happen to be around because they're really, really smart. And um, I don't think that they're out for themselves. I think they're out for peace in the universe. I really don't think that they're angry or, or uh, warlike or anything else. And I think perhaps if there was a, a civilization that got warlike along the way, they would have, uh, they would have been uh, smacked down 
by uh, other civilizations that say, uh, we can't do that here. We all have to get along together. So uh, yeah, it's been very interesting and will only get more interesting in the next few years. Do you think that we, as a species, will get further into outer space? Like, I.e., I, I think that we'll eventually live on the moon and use the moon as a base to planet hop. Uh, yeah. Um, why we haven't been back to the moon since we were there, um, that's an interesting question. I think that, that there was um, either either a civilization living there around the time that we landed back in the late 60s or there was enough remnants from the civilization that um, we couldn't hide it so we never went back um, I think it would be it would have made sense for us to colonize the moon first because they're not that far um, what it looks like they're going to do is to try to colonize Mars first. I'm wondering why they're doing that, unless we're, we still are being told, don't go to the moon because there's a, there's a, a civilization living there and they don't want you there. It does seem strange to pick Mars because it's virtually a one-way trip there. Yeah, cause it it's, keeps, like, it's, it's like 250,000 miles away. That's not that we can get there in three days, you know? It, it's not that far. And um, we had the, the technology, rudimentary as it was, back in 69 to land there. Um, imagine what we could do now. Well, the things we're talking on now are more powerful than the computers back then. Oh, my goodness sakes, yeah. Yeah, the, um, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I think I saw something not too, too long ago, that an Apple iPhone has more computing power than the NASA computers did back in the 60s. I, quite, I honestly believe that because the advancements yeah. of that technology. Sure. Now, do you think when we communicate, do you think we're communicating in the right way? Because we normally send like radio waves or we send like symbols and things like that, i.e. the one with a human bit on it, and uh, there's a recordings on the, I can't remember what what craft it was that went out. Oh, uh, Voyager. Yeah. And it, um, it, yeah. It's, it's gone out there, but basically we haven't heard much more else about it. We've heard the odd bits, but it's obviously still going. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, the first one, Voyager 1, has already left our solar system. Um, and it's out beyond the, the uh, asteroid belts that are out at the furthest extremes. And um, the other one is just about to leave the solar system. Um, if you can imagine, these things have been traveling since 1976-77. They are the fastest things that we have created. They're going about 38,000 miles per hour, I think. And it took them until today, almost, to get beyond the edge of our solar system. And that's not even one ten thousandth of the way to the nearest star. Scary, isn't so, it? <laughs> yeah, how, how are these aircraft um, from, uh, from other civilizations getting here? They have to be utilizing technology that we can only dream about. A lot of people think it's black holes, don't they? There's a lot of people that believe it's like a black hole technology. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I don't think it's black hole. I really think they've found a way to utilize um, other dimensions where time doesn't matter. And they've just been able to zip into another dimension um, and do whatever they're going to do and come out wherever they want to with very little actual time spent. Um, they 
they do the same kind of things um, during abductions when they uh, phase out. Uh, the uh, people from the craft uh, are almost, um, uh, they're almost uh, uh, invisible because they've uh, transitioned into another dimension. They're able to go through walls and roofs and windows and they go into homes and they pick people up and take them out the same way. Um, I, I honestly believe that they are using um, uh, dimensional travel uh, for a good part of it. Um, and uh, the other thing that they're doing is using uh, what's called an Einstein-Rosen bridge. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, it's not a, not a black hole, but it sort of reminds you of one. Uh, and um, they're able to open these things up whenever they want, go into them, and control how long that they're staying in them and where they come out. And they've got to have power capabilities on these ships that are probably each as large as the entire amount of power that we can generate on the Earth. Each one of them. Now, if, now, now if you had the opportunity to say an alien came down and said, Right, Tom, let's go and have a little discussion. What would you like to talk to them about? Wow. Um, I would probably be most interested in um, in their uh, anti-gravity and, and the propulsion. Um, how they go from place to place so quickly. Um, when they're in a gravity environment, how they just hover without making sound. Um, they, they'd probably hate me unless the person uh, that I was talking to was an engineer. And then, oh, Tom, come on, let me show you. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I, 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 would, I would be mostly interested in their, in their technologies, what they're doing and why. Do you think your military background helps you with the UFO thing? Because, obviously, being of military background... You may have come across it in your career at some point, I heard of, about UFOs. Um, okay, uh, the military background did not help me know. However, well, I shouldn't say that. What, what did help about the military background is the training that I received in electronics. Um, I received some of the best schools uh, ever. And um, I learned so much that uh, now I'm able almost to envision how something might work and actually sit down and just write about it. The schools were that good. Um, that's, that's what I learned from the military that was invaluable. Um, and they sent me to school for about two years. Do you... A lot of people think that um, the 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 military have used alien technology, i.e., the the invisible planes. Well, no, not invisible, but they are invisible to radar and things like that. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I think that's absolutely true. Um, when ships started uh, crashing um, around. Um, around the 40s and 50s, we recovered a whole lot of them. And um, we were able to look at little aspects of their technology and figure them out. Obviously, the major aspects we weren't because we didn't have any point of reference to what these guys were doing. But um, the things like uh, a radar absorbing uh, a craft stealth and... Um, uh, things like that. We absolutely figured that out uh, from um, from alien craft. And the other thing that we figured out that was a real boon to us early on was waveguide and um, light uh, light light transmission. Um, we learned how to 
utilize light to um, to um, my dog's on my lap here to, to utilize light uh, to transmit information. We learn to utilize light to um, make electronic circuits work faster, and we did a lot of a lot of that research in the early '60s, and that showed itself in the early '70s in the electronics that um, that became available in the, in, the, in the military. Um, we didn't get to the stealth thing because we didn't figure it out until uh, a little bit later. Um, and the stealth stuff was was um, first experimented on in the early 80s. And uh, we're able to fly our first planes um, that, were, that were built with this stealth technology um, much, much earlier than they told everybody that they had aircraft. And those were all done out in Area 51. Um, and uh, they, they actually are able to uh, absorb radar and um, not, not create a uh, reflection so that the radar can pick up things that are out there. They're, they're completely invisible to radar. What's the earliest recollection of a UFO sighting? I believe there's um, paintings in Australia and Red Rock where they've got very tall figures being visit, visiting the uh, Aboriginal people, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, if I'm not mistaken, the Aboriginal people um, had a lot of uh, rock uh, carvings that, that show that kind of stuff. They also had some paintings inside of caves. And um, what is interesting is um, in uh, one of my books, um, uh, I was talking about the, the influence that Native Americans had um, with the uh, with the extraterrestrials that they had been visited from thousands of years ago and um, among other things um, they related stories from the uh, uh, supposedly that were given to them by the extraterrestrials themselves about um, um, how to um, how to how to survive how to, how to make fire they, they they taught them all the basics and um, also told them that they are going to be uh, visiting again soon and that they should live a good life uh, what what it turned out to be is the people that visited the Native Americans were the exact same groups of people that visited the Aborigines, they visited the Dogon tribe in Africa, they visited um, the um, uh, the people in India and um, in um, ancient Samaria. They visited all these people all at the same time and they were all described the same way. Half man, half fish. They came out of the water and taught them things. I believe the half man, half fish um, um, reference was in the fact that their ships um, went underwater. And when they came out of the water, the people who saw them figured, well, they must be part fish. Yeah, because they didn't see them uh, coming but, out, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's how that story be, uh, began. And around the same time, right after the last great flood uh, on, on the Earth that wiped out like 99% of the uh, population, right around that time is when they visited all these places all within probably several years and taught... Um, the people who were there, uh, all the skills that they needed to uh, survive, and um, to this day, those stories live on in in their um, uh, in their descendants.
descendants, and they tell these stories um, on a regular basis. Uh, and this, the same stories are told in, by the Hopi tribe um, out in uh, uh, New Mexico and Arizona. And um, this was... Uh, this was an attempt to get our uh, population uh, restarted again and to give people enough skills to get through and to give them enough to think about so that they would, uh, um, they would have a good life and uh, um, always, always believe that they're about to be visited um, by the friends who, who uh, taught them initially. So yeah, it, it's it's very interesting that um, that you mentioned that because uh, everything happened at the same time, all describing the same kind of people all throughout the world. Yeah. And it was very very interesting when yeah. I, I, when I, I came across that. Yeah, I came across that myself as well. Um, yes, I, I, I believe you got. Um, I think it, I think when I looked at your website, was it four books? Sorry, say that again. Was it what? When I looked at your website, I think it, you had a series of four books. Is that correct? Four books. Yep. They are here. Volume one, volume two, volume three, and Going Interstellar. And that's a collection of my blogs that I wrote uh, describing the physics involved with um, with extraterrestrials. And yet again, as you mentioned before, and please mention your website again, so that people can go there and look it up and buy your wonderful books. Oh, sure. Um, www.theyarehere-conwell, C-O-N-W-E-L-L, dot com. Now, if you ordered through my, uh, if you ordered my books through the website, I can only ship to the U.S., Otherwise, the shipping is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, otherwise, my books are also available on Amazon. You can search me through They Are Here or Going Interstellar with my last name, Conwell. And um, uh, if you're from the UK, for instance, um, as, uh, as a you are, um, you can go to uh, Amazon UK and order my books there, too. Yeah, it, it's marvelous how you can put yourself a lot more out there now these days. Uh, yeah, um, and let me, let me tell you, I learned all that in the last 10 years. Uh, even though I worked in electronics and I was highly involved with software, um, I never imagined that this kind of thing was possible. And I also that you get contacted by people like me who are interested in you and you obviously been on other shows as I've seen and you do a lot of um, all kinds of shows are you doing a lot of um, speaking as well I saw yeah it's uh, it, it's awfully fun to get up in front of a crowd of people because they're they're wanting to be entertained and they want to hear new stuff and that's what my research is is new stuff and I love looking at people's eyes and telling them what I've discovered and it, it's just it's a lot of fun Mark a lot of fun and as, as, as they used to say on um, a certain program the truth is out there mm -hmm. oh. yeah that was, uh, was X-Files right yeah I used to love X-Files yeah what, oh, me too I mean, I know um, some of the stories are like bizarre, but yet again, there was elements of truth because they obviously read bits of the blue book and co copied some of the stories on there. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to here. Why don't you ask me that again? Do you know that you remember that the USA did the blue book? That they called yeah, UFO. Project Blue Book. Yep. Yeah, I saw a program once, years and years ago, and that's what sparked my interest in UFO, called uh, Project Blue Book, and it was a series of night like, dramas, but dramas of the stories involved in the Blue Book, and it was quite fascinating. Um, <coughs> excuse me. 
Um, one of the things that, that I did with my book, <laughs> I'm sorry, is that um, um, I did the research, uh, counted up how many things were seen and where, <laughs> and put that all on a map. Uh, so I could I could see where the hot spots were. <clears throat> In addition to that, uh, while I was doing my research, I I found um, some really unique uh, sighting reports um, uh, written by people, uh, and um, I I copied those sighting reports in and also put them in my book. Um, and some of them are frightening. Um, some are almost uh, beyond belief. They're they're loaded with with uh, technologies that we can only dream about. And um, I found that after I did that, um, people would come up to me and want me to tell stories about um, about the. The, um, the UFO sightings that, are, that I featured in my book. Well, um, I didn't want to just read from the book. I mean, that, uh, who wants to see some old guy reading to them, you know? I mean, come on. Uh, so what I did was um, I got some of the most interesting sightings, some of the ones that were uh, that revealed the most about what kind of craft these are, and I described generally what people saw, and then went into a discussion of um, uh, what kind of technologies they must have in order for them to be able to do that. And when I did that, that received a tremendous response. Um, people thought that was so cool that I were able, was, was able to uh, talk about just these general UFO reports and take it to the next step and discuss the technologies that they must have in order for them to do it. Um, so I find myself uh, giving that kind of a talk uh, all over the place now. Um, I have two of them coming up in uh, a place in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, Scarefest is called. It's one of the largest um, uh, scare, uh, horror, and paranormal conventions in the, in, in the uh, country. And I'm giving three speeches there. So that I'm really looking forward to. Going to be a lot of fun. Going to be a lot of fun. Um, they usually put 20,000 people through that place. And uh, can't wait to see what kind of stories I'm going to hear this year because I have a few things planned for them. So it, it's going to be interesting. Oh, well, I'd like to thank you for giving you me your time of day. I do appreciate that. And uh, what I'll do is I'll send you the download link when I've finished. I normally put it on my American podcast site that I use as well called Anchor FM. And that uh, shares it with Apple Podcasts and other ones in America as well. Okay, great. And I shall put the links to your books on there from the UK side of it. I'll find them on Amazon and I'll put the link on the, on my podcast as well. Excellent. Thank you so much. That's no problem, Tom. Thank you for your, thank you for doing this. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. Or night. Yep. This, was a, this was a lot of fun, Mark, and I, I appreciate your time. Thanks again. Thank you very much, sir. Bye. Uh, bye, Al.